Oxford University Press, Higher Education Webinars. And now, Oxford is proud to present Help Your Students Find the Fun in Music Fundamentals, led by Mihol Houlihan and Philip Taka. Hello, my name is Mihol Houlihan, and along with my co-author, Dr. Philip Taka, we have written a new book called From Sound to Symbol, published by Oxford University Press. The goal of our book is to put the fun back into teaching music fundamentals for both the student and the instructor. From Sound to Symbol, published by Oxford University Press, is the only text that uses sound first as a more natural and fun way for students to learn the fundamentals of music. The goal of this presentation is for us to look at some of the challenges we face in teaching music fundamentals, to look at the idea of what a sound to symbol orientation to teaching uh, music is, and to look at some of the distinctive features of this book and the research contained in it for teaching music fundamentals. Some of the course challenges we face are, how do we sequence information in a book from symbol to sound or from sound to symbol? Which one is better? How do we connect repertoire, performance, reading and writing, improvisation, composition, listening in a music lesson? Do we need to teach rhythm syllables and solfege syllables to develop reading and writing skills of students? And most importantly, how do we keep students engaged in the learning process? In order to address some of these challenges, our work has been shaped by current research from the field of music perception and cognition and the pedagogy of music theory. We wanted to figure out a way how to teach music through um, sounds as opposed to music symbols. And most importantly, we wanted to develop students' audiation skills. What we would like to show you is some videos that you can find on the Oxford Companion website that allows you to understand the process that we use. In actual fact, the process is very much like what teachers use in their classrooms, but it's, I think what's interesting is the sequence of how we use this process in our teaching. For each rhythmic or melodic um, melody that we're teaching, we notice that we have like one, two, three, four, we've got five steps um, that are used. So for example, students learn to internalize music, students learn to analyze what they hear, Students learn to construct a representation using pre-notation symbols, not music symbols. They learn to describe what they hear with syllables, solfege or um, rhythm syllables, and then they learn how to notate what they hear. Let's look at some of these um, videos, and again, they are all found on the, on the Oxford webpage. So the first musical example I'd like to show you is students internalizing music and we're going to focus on teaching 16 notes. see in that video students are learning to sing the melody, they're learning to keep the beat, they're learning to clap the rhythm and they're also learning to walk the beat and clap the rhythm at the same time. In the next example students are taught to analyze what they hear. professor is asking leading questions, so in order to answer the question, the students must actually audiate the melody in their head and discover how many beats are in a phrase and which beat has a certain amount of sounds. The next part of our process is we ask students to notate what they are actually hearing using pre-notation symbols. Let me show you. One, two, ready, sing and write.
So what's interesting about this stage of learning is that students are continually singing and this allows the, the instructor to assess if the students are understanding a concept or not. Once students can sing a melody and graph showing the number of sounds or for example showing melodic pitches um, using pre-notation symbols, the instructor can then introduce rhythmic or solfege syllables. For example, in teaching 16th notes are four sounds in a beat. When we say four sounds on a beat, we can label that with rhythm syllables and we can call it takadini. So we can say our song like this. Takadini ta di ta di ta di takadini ta di ta di ta takadini ta di ta di ta di takadini ta di ta your turn. So in other words, students are learning to identify the sounds of music with rhythm syllables. Once they can do this, then the instructor can show them how to notate this using traditional notation. Let me show you. We can write four sounds on a beat with four sixteenth notes. When we write four sixteenth notes, we write four notes with stems and we double the them across the top. So this will be we can also count with numbers. Ready and we count with numbers like this. One E and a two and one and two and one E and a two and one and two. One E and a two and one and two and one E and a two and one. Here are several examples of pages from the Sound to Symbol book and you will notice that it's very easy for the instructor, it almost reads like a lesson plan for the instructor to use the book because following along we have guidelines for the instructor and the students together how to internalize music, how to analyze what you hear, how to construct a rhythmic representation, then we introduce music theory in terms of describing what you hear with rhythm or solfege syllables, um, notating what you hear and of course we have copious examples of music theory exercises for practicing these concepts. What's interesting to note is that for each concept in the book we have a video on the companion website that instructors can view before they teach that particular concept in a lecture. Our students can go on the website themselves to review how to um, sing a particular example, how to understand how to describe something, how to use rhythm or solfege syllables. We have done the same thing with video examples for um, teaching melodic concept and again you may find this on the website. What's important to notice is that every single traditional concept that you find in a Music Fundamentals book we have covered in exactly the same way, but I think we've approached it from a sound to symbol approach as opposed to a symbol to sound approach. One of the things you should be noticing is that students are actively engaged in the learning process so the material becomes much more meaningful to them and they're excited about what they're learning. Again, for melodic elements, you'll find the same thing. Um, we show students how to internalize music, analyze music, create, for example, um, a visual representation. We show students how to sing melodies with solfege syllables. We show students how to notate um, using traditional notation. And then to read that notation using solfege syllables, letter names, and scale degrees. And of course, embedded into all of this is knowledge of music theory. For example, in teaching the pentachord scale, you'll see this is a section here determining the intervals between the notes of the pentachord scale, whole step and half step. And again, when we teach melody, we focus on, first of all, major pentachord scales because we think that's an interesting unit to work with, and then we expand it out to the full major scale. Again, more examples of the kind of writing exercises we have in the book. So you will notice, what's the difference between this publication and other publications out there in the market? First thing I would say to you, for those um, music theorists that have used this book in music schools, liberal arts schools, community colleges, that they will say that it's more active. The students are actively engaged in the learning process. The students also understand how rhythmic and melodic syllables work. We show them 
how to hear, how to read, how to write using rhythm and melodic syllables as a tool. You'll notice that the research is in the book is influenced by current thinking in the field of music perception and cognition. Um, the learning approach is organic. In other words, we take a musical example and that musical example is used for the basis of reading, writing, improvisation, composition, which is interesting. And of course, as you see, we clearly show students how to hear and read with rhythm and solfege syllables. And we link the teaching of rhythm syllables to counting and solfege syllables to note names. The book works um, in terms of progressive difficulty. It goes from very simple material to more complex material. There is a complete package for the instructor, complete package for the student, online on the Oxford webpage, companion site. And again, the book has been field tested in a variety of situations over many, many years, so we know that it works. There are 12 chapters in the books with appendices. There is an audio CD in the book that contains all the musical examples. And there is also an in-text interactive CD that is really important for students to practice music theory concepts. For example, they can go to the chapter in the interactive CD to practice intervals, and there's lots of examples where students can identify intervals both visually and hourly. Of course, always relating the material back to the sound to symbol book. In the second edition of the Sound to Symbol book, we have included more written exercises. We have included an interesting um, section in each chapter, and it's we include a real music score, so students can actually go and see the music score, some of the concepts they've learned in that particular chapter. Um, there is a Do and La minor pedagogy section in the book for those um, music instructors that would like to use one of those approaches. We have included in this book a harmony section, that teaches music that teaches harmony through sound to symbol orientation and we have a new chapter um, called composing a song that's interesting for those music um, theory instructors that would like the students as a final exercise to compete to uh, compose their own musical example and the students can work through that chapter to understand how they can do this um, you'll notice that the pages have been redesigned for clarity, that there's a great companion website for instructors on the Oxford webpage and a companion site for students. You will also find on the Oxford webpage a syllabus and a layout of courses, there are some curriculum guides, there are lesson plans. Um, for those instructors that are looking for more sight reading examples, we have copious sight reading examples that follow each chapter. Again, if you have any questions or answers, please feel free to contact us um, at Oxford University Press and we would be delighted to share with you some of the lesson plans we are designing and working on or some of the other lesson plans that other instructors have developed to go along with this book. Thank you. From Sam the Symbol, second edition, by Michal Houlihan and Philip Taka, the only text that uses sound first as a more natural and organic way to learn music theory. As a leader in higher education, Oxford is committed to helping instructors find viable solutions to their common teaching challenges through forums like webinars. We hope you enjoyed today's recorded presentation and that you are able to learn some key strategies to employ in your course. Bookmark our webinar site to view a schedule of our upcoming live webinars. Browse by session and sign up right on the site. To provide feedback on today's session, please visit the following link and fill out a short survey. You will be automatically entered in a chance to win $50 in OUP books from our Academic and Trade Division. Your feedback will allow us to refine our presentations going forward. And lastly, From Sound to Symbol, along with other great discipline-related texts, can be found on our website. Thanks for visiting, and we hope to be able to connect with you again soon.